Hi Stampers, it's Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. Welcome to today's live. I'm pre-recording because I am recuperating from shoulder surgery, but I didn't want you guys to miss out. And so today I have this really great card that's a bit of a fun fold. We're calling it a staggered gate fold. My friend Laura Buchler from Canada showed me this one and I just couldn't wait to share it with you. So let's pop down to my desk and I'll show you how it's made. Okay, so I already pulled out the stamp set we're gonna be using. We're using beautiful balloons. This is a fabulous set for birthdays and it comes with a coordinating set of dies that will cut out the balloons and the streamers and it's got a, um, this is a beautiful set for birthdays and comes with a great set of dies that'll even cut out all your balloons and streamers and have some additional added benefits to it too. But we're just gonna play with this packet of materials I already have pre-cut. I uh, went ahead and did that ahead of time. We're gonna start out with our card base. And so that's going to be this part that is four and a quarter by five and a half. And then we're going to layer on top of that a piece that is five and a quarter by four. And then I have a piece of designer series paper to go on that that is three and three quarter by five. So that's just some simple layering. We're going to have a door come in from the left, the right. And so that's going to be this one here. We're going to be adhering this underneath and it's going to fold over and this one is two and a half by four and a half scored at three and a half then i have some berry burst to go over that that is two and a quarter by three and a quarter and then i have a piece of designer series paper two by three then we have another door coming in from the left side. So this one is in bubble bath and is four and a quarter by three and three quarter scored at two and three quarter. And then to go on top of that is a piece of berry burst that is two and a half by four and a piece of designer series paper two and a quarter by three and three quarter then I have a piece of basic white that's going to go on the back side of that. That is two and a half by four. And then I have this piece here that is two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I have this little piece of designer series paper, which is going to go on the bottom. And then I have this right here, which is actually two pieces of designer series paper that we're going to use to cover the... Uh, flap on our envelope but we'll get to that towards the end then I have some circles I've cut out with the stylish shapes this square was probably approximately two and a quarter by two and a quarter for our bubble bath ones and then the basic white ones looks like the square was about one and three quarter by one and three quarter okay like I said these are going to flip in from the sides and so we're going to mount them onto the, the back layer. So we're going to start with our base of the bubble bath. And we're going to put this one right here. So I'm going to take some liquid glue. And I'm going to stick that right there. And I'm just kind of watching that score line. Like I don't want to make the card any wider than it is, but I want to make sure it's going to cover to the edge. And then I'm going to take this other piece and I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to have it come in at the, about in the middle. And again, pushing it up flush with the edge. So it's going to do that. Then we can go ahead and we can put this one, our berry burst layer, over the top. And that's going to bury the little flaps. 
so we don't notice them. They won't be quite as obvious. And then we're going to put our decorative designer series paper over that. And I'm using liquid glue. Again, you don't need much. If you use too much, it'll make your paper warp. You wouldn't want to do that, especially with the designer series paper. And then, as I said, I have this little strip right here. It looks like it's one inch by two and a half. And that's just to give a little bit of a decorative edge to the bottom of this one. And this is going to give us a little place to write. So I'm going to adhere that one in here. And then I have this second one I'm going to put on the other side. So how's everybody doing today? Talk to me. It's so odd to be pre-filming all of this. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm well enough that I'm joining you in the comments. Okay. Um, this piece of the designer or the ribbon, what I have is I have it going under our berry burst layer on the front. So I'm going to come in with some regular stamp and seal. And I'm just going to put some down the middle. And what I want to do is take my ribbon and I've kind of folded it in half. And I want to be able to lay it right over that tape. Then I can put our cardstock over the top of that. Now, this ribbon is fairly thin. Oops, that's not the right one. This ribbon is fairly thin, so we're not going to worry about it adding bulk underneath. Oh, the neighbors must be doing something outside. I apologize for the dogs barking. Now, if this ribbon was any bulkier, we may have wanted to add this layer with Stampin' Dimensionals, and that's because it would allow for some room underneath but this one did pretty good. It's not um, bothering it. We're going to take this other piece. We're going to set this over here. And then we can add our designer series paper. See, it's coming together nicely. So who thought this card was going to be difficult and is now going, oh, that's not so bad. What do you think? Are you going to give this one a try? And would you do it with this same bundle or would you try it with something different? Because this could be done with all sorts of different things. You could make this a masculine card. You could make it a kid's card. It could be all kinds of things. Okay, so this is going to be able to tie over here. I've left enough ribbon that it's got some tail to it so it's not going to be too hard to tie a bow with. So it looks like it. I used a piece that was 18 inches long because this is 9 inches folded in half. And then we're ready to stamp our sentiments. Oh, and if you wanted to, you can put a little bit back here and just hold that in place. You don't have to, it's just kind of helpful. But then I'm going to put happy birthday ooh, on our outside. You can see I've got lots of pre-cut balloons in here from the last time I was playing around. And then we're going to have, I think it's time for a celebration and yay you. Now we probably wanted to stamp this one before adhering. I had forgotten I put words on that one. Now I'm aligning this on grid paper and then I'm aligning the block on grid paper, keeping that hopefully very straight. And then I'm going to be stamping in very burst because I am color coordinating everything. And since that is one of the colors we're using for our cardstock, And I could have used bubble bath. That's what our base is, but I just think the, 
the berry burst is giving it a little bit more of a pop, which I really liked. I'm going to clean that stamp off right away because I don't want it to stain any more than necessary. And I've just got a Simply Chamois. I cut mine into fourths so they're easier to mess with. And they're just plain water. Now I've also got my Stampin' Scrub over there and I may, before I put them away, clean them with a little bit of Stampin' Mist. And this is not only a cleaner, but it's also a stamp conditioner. And I highly, highly recommend you use this with your red rubber stamps because it keeps them from cracking as they get older. I have some stamps I've had since the 90s and they're still in great shape because I condition them with the Stampin' Mist and I keep them clean using the Stampin' Scrub. Okay, so I need one more. I want the Yay You. Okay, I closed my ink pad to avoid putting my hand in it, but I wasn't quite done. There's that one. Now, when you're inking up your stamps, I know we all have a tendency to go straight in the middle and always go right in the middle only. But I don't know if you can tell, I can tell from looking at it that there's a lot more ink puddled around the outside because it's just natural that when we push in the middle, it's going to push the ink to the sides. So if you're not getting a good coverage, you may want to take the back of a spoon and rub that around and kind of distribute the ink a little more evenly. And also don't be afraid to stamp on the edges to ink up your stamps because then you are helping to use up the ink on the sides and also distribute it. And of course, all of our ink pads um, have these little tracks that maybe you want to run a birthday candle down there or some chapstick, help lubricate it, and then do this. And as they close, they store with the pad upside down. Did you notice that? And what that does is it makes the ink puddle on top of the pad, keeping it nice and juicy. So when you go to use it, it's going to be um, fresh and nice and moist. Okay, there's our outside, here's our inside. And as I'm using the stamp and seal, I don't know if you noticed, but I do a little bit of a flick, I go over because um, we want to make sure that this is snapping off up here. We want it to break off at the tip because if it doesn't, then it's going to give us some difficulty next time we go to use it. It's not going to want to come out or it may start raveling on itself and we definitely don't want that. And you also want to make sure that you're keeping the case up in here very clean because if that gets some extra um, goobers, <laughs> some extra glue on there that it might grab at your tape that's rolling out from the roll and you don't want it to do that. Then we can stick this one on here and then we're done. So there is a fabulous birthday card that's a little something extra without being difficult. So there you go. We can play with this a little bit, make that pretty, flag the ends, all that good stuff. But then you're ready to go. I hope you enjoyed today's card and that you give it a try. Don't forget, all of these materials and supplies can all be purchased in my online store at queenbeecreations.net. And then you would just click shop now.